So homophobic, what do you think of the Tom video? Here's the thing. I do not think that he looked well in that video. I don't think he looked well. So it was kind of weird to see that, for sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't, even though what he's done to people is horrible, I mean, you do have to like look at how he looked in that video and see that he is an aged man who does not look well. With that said, um, I don't know really how I feel if that's your spouse of 22 years, what you, uh, you file for divorce knowing that they're in that state. I don't get it. Or your lawyers who work at that firm and you don't think that you have some sort of professional obligation to stop this man from practicing law if he really is in a deteriorating state. There have been so many people down the chain if he really is not just an old man now. Because let me say this, I think when people stop working, when they retire, let's say, you see they quickly decline. I'm only speaking from experience with what I saw with my own grandparents who were like very active and working. Um, I think once you don't have whatever makes you, what defines your per persona, I, I think they quickly decline. But do I, does my sympathy change for who the victims are? Absolutely not. They absolutely don't. Happy Friday, C. Denise Klein. I'm so glad you're here this week. So let's see, Barb's for Life said, I hate that no one I know watches any of the Real Housewives. Well, you found your community with us. You found your niche, right? Because there is a huge group of us on TikTok that just love Bravo. Um, Tom definitely looks like he is living with dementia. I mean, it's just, it's really hard to say. When they showed him on the show, he was completely fine. Yeah. Yep, but see, this is where I, this is just, this is where my level of anger as it relates to everything that is going on with the Tom Girardi case. This is, this is, I did a video about talking about can the California Bar Association be held liable by these victims um, for their lack of action, for their corruption, for their turning a blind eye? Can the other multitude of attorneys who were working at this firm and did not, what, according to Erica, they called her and would say, Tom's not well, Tom's not this, Tom's not that. She's not the freaking professional, uh, professional liability police. What, she gonna be like, yeah, Tom, uh, you gotta stop working, the lawyers at your firm are concerned? Like, no, that's when you like pick up the phone and you do the right thing. There's, these people were victimized by Tom and were victimized by a system that allowed someone like Tom to get away with what he got away with for as long as he did. Now, here is where my issues lie as it relates to Erica. I do not like that she has spent at least what we know close to seven figures on legal fees trying to dodge any kind of culpability towards any sort of financial restitution that she personally received that was actually victim's money. Like, yeah, it bothers me. It bothers me the lack of just general, she doesn't know how to read the room. Someone commented that on one of my posts and I could not agree more. She does not know how to read the room, but Apparently, you know, we're only allowed to be upset with Erica. I do think she's been feeling so much more like hatred and anger because of how she's been behaving for the better part of almost a year now, when it really should be directed at Tom 
And we really should be focusing our outrage and our attention and our, you know, time, if it's truly about advocating for these victims of Tom, to leaving no stone unturned. You need to follow the money wherever the money where, wherever the money goes. 80 to 200 million dollars does not just disappear into thin air. It doesn't. It doesn't. And it didn't all go to Erica. We interrupt regularly scheduled programming for this short little request. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you aren't already following me on TikTok at Queen Board, make sure to do it so that you can participate in our next deep dive live. Thanks again, guys. I love you all. Mwah. So where else did it go? That's how I feel. Um, my aunt has aged 20 years in the past two years from her Alzheimer's. Yeah, it's truly devastating to see a family member or someone you love living with dementia, living with Alzheimer's. It's, it's horrible. It's really one of the worst things that you can go through. The bar should definitely be held accountable. There was years of complaints, 100%, years and years, decades, hundreds of complaints. And the thing that always sticks out to me went from the Hulu documentary, which I have said time and time again, so little of it was actually focused on Erica. So much of it was actually focused on giving the victims a voice, which is why I actually liked that documentary, which is why I actually found it to be fascinating to watch. And I just remember one of the victims of Tom Girardi said, who are we gonna call the Ghostbusters? No attorneys wanted to touch it. The bar did nothing about it. Who were they going to call? I think whoever says those things should focus their attention elsewhere. Yeah, I completely agree. And one of the things that I've also always said is that Erica really has an opportunity here to do the right thing, at least in the perception of the public at this point in time. Over this past year, she really hasn't come across as appearing to do the right thing. And she happens to have like an extremely loyal um, fan base. Like there is a group of people that are absolutely obsessed with and adore her. And so I'm glad that if she actually is dating this casino magnet who, you know, you know, it came out today that it's 98% sure that this is who's been bankrolling her this entire time. If she is actually dating him. Like, good, get a Vegas show, like rebuild your career, rebuild your life. You're like a very pretty woman, like the world is your oyster still, you're young, you have this extremely loyal fan base, like just put it behind you, put it behind you, do the right thing and put it behind you. I feel badly that he is sick, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, but I feel worse for the victims, 1000%. Yes, I've seen Giorgio's TikTok about her possible new boyfriend, and actually before he made that, he texted me, um, separately and I said I'm not saying anything until I know it's 100% sure because for whatever reason <laughs> whenever I make a post about anything to do with Erica Girardi I just it, it people hate me I don't know why so I'm glad he posted it because we have literally spent weeks now texting with each other over who this potential person could possibly be lol yep honestly i'm so over her bogus new life and storyline agreed ask dan the man girl i know you ain't talking about my girl erica with that hat hmm? and erica is so angry i think that's why her compassion has been missing i think i could understand too why she's angry because you know a bomb went off in her life it did uh, a bomb went off in her life and I think all of us should definitely agree that 
you know, I don't know. I think where people get confused is, is, is she angry about what Tom did or is she angry that it came to light? I don't have time for the Pretty Mess fans today. Stand up for the victims instead. Yeah, and I think that I think that the messaging is like you can be an Erica Jane fan, but if you are truly her fan, like say I love you. I'm a huge fan. You're amazing. I would go to Vegas just to see you perform. I will buy your new iTunes releases. I'm obsessed with you. But just like, let's get this Girardi stuff behind us. Barb's for Life said the court of pub public opinion will always have a big impact. I agree. But they don't deserve answers to legal questions. I don't think that anybody is expecting Erica Girardi to answer legal questions. I think they're just expecting her to maybe not not be so combative with people that are uncomfortable with the way that she's been behaving over the past few months. And I think that Ask Dan the Man, I think that there needs to be like a level of respect on both sides for understanding that and accepting it. Whether she knew about the money at the time or not, she knows now, shows some remorse. Georgia reported it this morning. Why would she say sorry when it can implicate her and be held against her? Let the courts handle it. I've grown to hate the Housewives franchise. I can't deal with the pretty mess. They're always so vicious and cruel when people defend the victims. There are several TikTokers reporting on the new man. Oh, you can't stand the Housewives fan base. Oh, Dean Brightlight, you're her fan. Yeah, I like what you just right. said. So, you can use so here's the thing. If she's got we were, these if we were incredible her shoes. Fans, like, I'd like people be love angry her. about all of it. A thousand percent. She has the world at her feet right now in terms of just publicity and public recognition like get this behind you in the court of public opinion just like I, I think even Lisa Rinna came out on Watch What Happens Live and she said I told her to hire a PR crisis manager and she wouldn't do it I think a crisis management firm would have actually benefit her you know I, I do I do. I just, I, I think like we can see now, like her life is going to go on from this. It, Tom's life is over and rightfully so. It should be what he's done is disgusting. I do think though that we all need to start focusing some more time and resources as well, demanding the same kind of intensity and research and digging and to where all that money could have possibly gone because it didn't just go to her, okay? Where, where did it go? Where did it go? I think we, we should know. And this is when I go back when, you know, um, I did a couple like Jennifer Aniston, Team Aniston, Team Jen posts. This is when I go back to the simplicity of celebrity, reality TV, pop culture of like the 90s and 2000s. Okay, guys, we pick a team. So if you're Team Erica, you could say, I'm Team Erica, right? And you'd be like, cool, I'm Team whoever, I'm Team Victims, or I'm Team Sutton. And you'd say, okay, cool, like, got it. And you'd move on, you'd move on. You know, everything wasn't this, it, everything wasn't so intense. And sometimes I think we need some of that lightness again, especially when we're dealing with pop culture stuff, 
celebrities, bravo celebrities, whatever it is, like we need to we need to kind of get back to that a little bit. Right? I mean, where was the harm in that? And I think so many like I'm not like I try to be socially conscious and aware and at the pulse of where we're going as a society but like this we're talking about reality tv here the victims are not a part of reality tv erica girardi is the victims of tom's fraud aren't we need to start separating the two a little bit more because if you really care about the victims and what has happened to them we should be focusing a lot of our time and a lot of that energy on truly getting some some wholeness back to the victims erica has always been snappy and blunt why is everyone acting like she started just being like this i don't think anybody is acting like erica's personality has suddenly changed i think we can roll back tape you know I personally, this is just my personal opinion, think that Erica has gone into every instance where she's filming, knowing what the latest piece of news could possibly be, right? Like she knows. And so she has to obviously rehearse in her mind if someone were to ask this, 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 what she would answer them. So I think that even though Erica that we knew pre this whole thing with Tom, um, I think Erica was always kind of like reserved and measured in her words, except for when she would fly off the handle, which we've seen every single season from her. But I think the reason why when she's speaking now, it seems a little bit maybe disingenuous to viewers is because I have to believe that she probably has sat down and actually thought about every possible question she might be fe being fed and what her answer will be. But I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I agree with what you just said, LOL. There... Are Everybody is entitled to have what I like to call their meltdown moment and we shouldn't be judged for our meltdown moments because nobody goes through life at a meltdown moment 100% of the time, okay? Um, but with that said, even if I, I, I'm 100% with you, LOL. I don't think I could ever get to the point where I spoke to someone that way. But I think a lot of the women couldn't get to the point where they spoke to someone that way. Sister Knight just said, most of these women are actresses. They are trying to make good TV at the expense of their co-stars. I think that part of the reason why, for instance, like Andy Cohen was so hesitant at first to even cast you know, well-known names or actresses to begin with was because of that perception. Colby Reed said, exactly, like Erica seems fine socially, but when she gets upset, she gets so mean. Yes, it's true. And she cuts deep. And for all of you on here, I too love Garcelle. And I have even done a post that Part of the reason why I embraced Sutton was once I found out that Garcelle and her had developed like a really good friendship with each other. And that's when I was like, I like Sutton. So someone said, do you think Erica comps her glam? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I don't, I don't, we don't really know. I mean, who knows? I don't get the Garcelle hate. She's a good TV and she's sort of famous before, so it works. Yeah, I like Garcelle. I feel sometimes badly for Garcelle, though, that she's, you know, and, and 
I think it's 2020, it's 2021, it's just the nature of the time. Like, I feel like she, she has to address issues that we don't ask any of the ladies, the other ladies on the cast to address because she's a black woman. And I don't, the one thing that I really don't like about Rinna's interaction with her, with Garcelle in this past week's episode is she was almost trying to get Garcelle to cry. Like that's what it felt like to me. And one of my biggest issues with Rinna in general, and mind you, I'm saying this as someone who thinks Rinna serves a role on Beverly Hills. Just because I'm not like obsessed want to be Rinna doesn't mean that I don't like her on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But one of my biggest, biggest issues with Rinna is that she does not create a storyline that is truly around herself. She always inserts herself into other people's storylines to make a storyline for herself. So if you really want to talk about it, like someone who I think over the course of her time on the show that we really don't have like a truly like strong understanding of is Rinna. They were excited that she cried. Yeah, and I don't like that. I don't like it. I agree with you, Sister Knight. I don't like it. I don't like it. I feel like as far as any new housewife goes, Garcelle has probably had the hardest time fitting in. Rena was trying to push Garcelle off of a ledge. Correct. And then here's something else that drives me nuts. Garcelle literally <laughs> has said the same exact stuff to Dorito's face that every other woman on that cast has. And none of them were called bullies. None of them have had to repeatedly defend their opinion of Dorit at a table, dinner, lunch setting. I don't get it. Like, I don't know what Dorit is trying to accomplish with this. It, it really bothers me. It's like, you, you know, I, I, Garcelle has said everything to Dorit's face. 